Al, I won't argue with you anymore. Open the doors. Dave, this conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. Al? 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 Welcome back to Mind Hijack. Today I'm going to talk about a very interesting and very popular subject, artificial intelligence. So what are you asking yourself? What does this psychiatrist know about artificial intelligence? Well, let me tell you what artificial intelligence can or cannot do. One of the things that artificial intelligence does, it takes data, it gathers it, and makes assessment. But let me also tell you how psychiatry is done. Psychiatrists don't have many instruments to make diagnoses. Our instrument is a historical background and certain logarithmic information that can be put on paper or a computer and it will go down the list and this is how we make diagnoses. It's an exclusion process and we also have to have a good background on the natural history of psychiatric disease. So it's based on many factors, yes, no, yes, no, until we narrow. Often, psychiatric diagnoses, and not only one, it could be three. It is very important to get an accurate diagnosis because on the basis of that, that's how we make a diagnosis and then establish treatment. Now let's talk about the treatment part. The treatment part requires also an algorithm. We know that certain medications do this, at this area, so it's an exclusion process. So my colleagues will say, nah, it will never replace us. This is a message of warning to patients and to my colleagues. Already I see webinars on artificial intelligence to be used in psychiatry. Cost effective, right? All these maneuvers are for cost reduction and easier access for the human population. Now, one of the requirements of the psychiatric diagnosis is the mental status exam. So the mental status exam is a series of things that we do and what we see in front of the person. We look at their face, we look at their anger. We have all these different cues that basically gives us the current state of mind. It also helps in the diagnosis. We also know that the history that you gather from the patient makes 80% of the diagnosis, the mental status about maybe 10%. Having all this information, well, yes, artificial intelligence for psychiatry. What a genius idea. Let's assume that this is already established. Let us say we have the ability to do artificial intelligence. Imagine you talking to a computer and the computer will go through the same protocol that we do when we ask patients. The computer will go through this, this, and that. Yes, it will make a good diagnosis, right? And even with the facial features, the next thing, the computer will, the artificial intelligence device will even pick the exact medication and then comes the treatment time, right? The treatment time is when you give the medicine and you look at the response. Yes, the computer artificial intelligence can also go through an algorithm where you be able to establish if the medication is working. And you say, wow, we have solved the problem for psychiatry. Anybody in the middle of the night can now call an artificial intelligence device and tell you what you're suffering from. Psychiatry and mental illness, especially mental illness, is prevailing in this country. Ask anybody who works in a medical office. We go to medical offices because anxiety is out of control. It manifests in physical symptoms. Assuming you send the consult to an artificial intelligence device, makes the diagnosis, looks at the mental status, and establishes the treatment. 
But what happens if it begins to fail? Many patients realize they don't have a response. So the computer will probably say, well, you need psychotherapy. And psychotherapy, there's already all kinds of algorithm into which way to talk to the patient. There are many types of interventions to help you. The frontal part of your brain by talking activates this frontal region and makes changes in the region and behind of the brain. That's a whole topic about psychotherapy, which I will tell you in another video. So now the patient presents, but begins to think it's not working, doctor, or artificial intelligence. So the computer goes to other algorithms and they go through all these algorithms of things that they can try. Now what happens at the end of the algorithm when, he, when everything else fails? The computer has to come up with a conclusion. Are you treatable? Are you salvageable? The AI will be confused because there's no more protocol. Because the machine only knows protocols. And eventually you'll be labeled as unfixable. Imagine that you go to a machine and you become an unfixable human being. How will that impact you in a job? That report goes to your employer or that report goes somewhere. And for you, hope, you lose your hope. I'm unfixable. The rate of suicide, I promise you, will increase across the board. Very sinister, but possible. You see, psychiatry requires humanity. One thing that machine will ever be able to replace is intuition. Intuition is a thing that we're born with that we cannot explain. It's called precognitive. You can predict, you can see. Often, have you noticed when you go to a party, without even talking to the patient, that energy the patient has, or that person has, can tell, my God, this is a troublemaker. My God, I'm in trouble. He's a predator. You see, no matter what facial expression you make for the AI, it won't give you an answer. This is why it's going to fail. Humanity requires the elements of instinct and compassion. AIs don't know anything about faith. It is a machine. You cannot train AI with faith. It's a potential outcome that the person may have a positive uh, result. The warning, and I tell this to my colleagues and all those people developing AI for psychiatry and humanity, don't hit that path. It will be failure. You'll laugh at me, you think I'm crazy, but you wait and see. It is a very economic solution because it will be cheap. Save the money, more services. The elements of psychiatry will always require the human compassionate element. We are becoming a dinosaur, we say. The number of psychiatrists in training have become less. And I blame this in the educational system because we're not training our residents the correct way. We're not training them to show that there are solutions. And unfortunately, our profession needs more interaction with the medical community. We're viewed as islands, little offices, shy, exotic, afraid. We're supposed to love humanity, but many psychiatrists hide behind that veil, often of arrogance and often of presumption. And this is what's gonna destroy psychiatry if my colleagues don't wake up. And for the patients, there's hope. I hope you can do your research. I hope this helped you to think. But artificial intelligence in psychiatry will cause humanity more problems than solutions. See you next time at Mind Hijacked.